This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 680F Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Flat tires, fault codes, and now being hacked. These are the hazards of the new age highway. You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side, as always, is Matt Cole. Hacking and cyber attacks are faceless strong arm robberies. Internet pirates can shut down a carrier's entire operation in a matter of minutes from thousands of miles away. But these incidents aren't isolated just to back office systems. Technology has granted sophisticated attackers a means into the truck itself. All the new technology and connectivity within vehicles like tractor trailers not only makes vehicles smarter and improves efficiency, but it's also a new attack vector for cyber criminals. Fleet Defender CEO and founder Terry Reinert joins the 1044 this week, and while it sounds something like out of the Fast and Furious, he says the capabilities exist for cyber attackers to hijack a rig while it's rolling down the road with the driver inside. So like if you've got a satellite terminal, if you've got cellular modems, you know, from part of your telematics or ELD or, or whatever else. So there's different vectors in there. Like even some of the more modern trucks, they've got, I mean, upwards of seven or eight different, you know, wireless connectivity to the vehicle itself. But there's other like really interesting attack vectors against vehicles like the National Motor Freight Trucking Association. They released uh, information about eight months ago on a vulnerability that would allow anybody with a, a small little software defined radio, you know, probably cost like 50 bucks down at the store and an antenna. They could point the antenna at the truck, send the right RF signal, like the radio frequency signal at the truck, and it would put diagnostic messages on the trailer network and lock the brakes of the trailer. So like even, you know, without even having to touch the truck, they can have like very devastating effects on the vehicle itself. And then, of course, if they have physical access to the truck, then, you know, they can do a whole lot more. The driver provides some measure of protection from an attack because the cyber criminals lose their anonymity and the driver can either attempt to stop it or call the police. But it's really a race, Terry said, to see who can control the situation first, the good guy or the bad guy. Think about it. I mean, even with somebody in the truck, if they lose control of the truck, that could be pretty devastating. And if you lose control of the ability to brake, if you lose control of, you know, on other types of commercial vehicles and consumer vehicles, you know, power steering is no longer pneumatic. You know, it's now actually a, just a, a big motor sitting at the end of the steering column that assists the driver. And that's, you know, driver steering. And so you've got like a power steering control module that uh, if an attacker happens to hit it with the right kind of malware, they could take control and affect the steering of the vehicle as well. And so before the vehicle could even come to a safe you know, stop, hackers could potentially affect the ability of the driver to bring it to a safe stop. A cybersecurity breach on back office systems is almost always a ransomware play where attackers cripple a trucking company until they pay the hackers a large sum of money to turn back over access to the business systems. By breaching the truck itself, Terry said cyber criminals have more options, and he tells us what those options are after a word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. So it really depends on who's doing it, right? So 
you've got specific organized crime, uh, international organized crime groups that they're like behind most of the ransomware. So yes, that's what their play would be is, is extorting ransom from companies. You've got, you know, actual like nation states that would be interested in, in harming the economy of, you know, Western civilizations, United States, European Union, Canada, you know, those types of things. So it could even be even like at the na- nation state level, uh, looking to harm economies, uh, and looking to like delay responses from Western militaries to aggression around the globe. So, you know, we're tracking and, and working with the government on a lot of these different, you know, threat actors, what they're doing and why they're doing it. As Hollywood as this all sounds, Terry says it's actually happening right now. There are what we call indicators of compromise, and we have seen indicators of compromise on vehicles. It is still kind of in this emerging state. There's a lot more, you know, obviously details being collected by governments, but we've seen some things hit the news. You know, like, for example, heavy duty vehicles like, you know, class A trucks and things like that are very similar in nature, uh, architecture and design to like tractors and combines. You know, they're all just smart, connected vehicles. They all run some flavor of CAN bus, whether it's J1939 or, or this or that. And, uh, you know, with the war between Russia and the Ukraine, you know, the Russians stole a bunch of John Deere tractors and then uh, Ukrainian hackers actually bricked, uh, you know, erased the firmware, basically a ransomware attack, very similar in, you know, technique remotely. And so now Russia has a bunch of tractors that don't work. And so like that just kind of proves like, okay, like this mobility sector, like all transportation, whether it's construction and mining, logistics, you know, ag tech, whatever, like these vehicles are vulnerable to those types of attacks. It really depends on who the threat actor is that's doing it. We are seeing a lot more like vehicle tracking and theft um, by organized crime, specifically up in the New York, New Jersey area. So that's starting to become more widespread. I mean, you've got people stealing cars now where they just walk up, they're able to pop a headlight out, connect into the CAN bus that goes to the headlight, and then unlock the doors and, and turn off the engine ignition inhibitor, start the vehicle and drive away without having the key fob. And there's like even somewhere like like Toyota's, I think it was, they have a, a CAN bus harness that goes up to the trunk lock. And they'll use a Dremel tool, cut a little hole in the metal around the trunk lock, connect into the wires and steal a car. And so like we're starting to see more and more of this like advanced you know, threats from a theft perspective. And also like from a organized crime perspective, you know, they, they operate just like a business, right? Like they want to be more efficient, decrease their risk and increase their profitability. And so instead of having, you know, 50 guys that sit outside the port of Miami that just follow trucks as they go all around the country. And then once the driver leaves it unattended, steal it, you know, now they can track vehicles completely digitally and they can actually look at like load manifests and see what's on the truck. So like they can just optimize their tactics and what they do just like a business would. So what exactly is a fleet supposed to safeguard itself from? Enemy state-sponsored attackers out to cripple transportation infrastructure or the East Coast Mafia after a high-value load of electronics? The larger threat right now would be organized crime. Um, but that is slowly shifting towards na- nation state level as, you know, capabilities are developed and as the world starts to get more and more, you know, destabilized. And so I don't know if I could put a percentage number on, on each one, but yeah, there, there is a wide mix of threats across that whole spectrum. And they, they constantly evolve as, you know, just the nature of what's going on evolves as well. Like you see in the movies, people taking over, you know, vehicles from a cyber attack. And I mean, that is today. Like that is occurring. We are seeing indicators of compromise. You've got government regulations coming out from the UN, the European Union, and soon the United States that say, hey, we need to be taking a much stronger approach to cybersecurity in our vehicles. You have to have cyber intrusion detection systems within your vehicle to protect you against this stuff. I mean, even in the United States, you know, the government listed logistics and, you know, long haul tractor trailers as critical infrastructure. Unless you're a hacker, I guess, getting into and navigating a truck's ECU is somewhere between difficult to impossible. But Terry says some of the basics of protecting a truck are pretty simple. When was the last time you took your vehicle into the dealership and said, hey, I want you to update all the software in my ECUs? You know, just like, you know, we update our cell phones all the time. Every time Apple or Google pushes out a a software update, you know, Microsoft constantly popping up for Windows, you know, install this update, security update. Nobody takes their car in to get their software updated. Like, it's just not a thing. And if you did, guess what? There's a price tag on that. 
They don't just do it for free. Now, you've got like Teslas who will do like updates over the air and they're starting to get smarter about it. But I mean, we're still a decade out from seeing every vehicle out there actually having, you know, over the air updates that can that can occur. You know, Fleet Defender and what we do is we've actually developed a cyber intrusion detection system for heavy duty vehicles. So we are actually a box that sits in the vehicle with a small screen that alerts the driver if there's any anomalies occurring within their vehicle, whether that be, you know, like the sexy James Bond, like the movie stuff, right? Like taking over the brakes and the steering and driving the truck off the road to like maintenance anomalies. So something's going wrong with the vehicle from a maintenance perspective or even an operator safety perspective. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.